Aid and Item Factions. Okay, we actually have a video as well? Alright. Let's see, let's see. Uh, let me check something. No, we're good. Yep. We are good. Let's uh, talk about it. Let's see what uh, this uh, post here is going to give us. Hello, travelers, and welcome to our deep dive into our trade and item faction systems arriving February 21st, uh, 2014. With the full release of Last Epoch, uh, we got many exciting features to share. Okay, um, why we feel confident is what we are sharing with you today. The systems are being actively tested in community community testing program, and the details below are still subject to changes. Okay, let's uh, watch the video first. Greetings, travelers. I'm Judd Kobler, founder of Eleventh Hour Games and game director for Last Epoch. Today, we will be discussing the highly anticipated item faction system coming to the full release of Last Epoch on February 21st. We're very excited to release this innovative new way for players to participate in the deep and rewarding item hunt that Last Epoch. Is the audio fine? Please let me know. Epoch offers in the way that they like to play. By joining the Merchants Guild, you will be able to buy, sell, and trade items through the bustling bazaar. Or, if you choose to join the Circle of Fortune, you'll set your sights to the stars and be able to bolster your item acquisition through prophecies and increased item drop rates. This system is the result of many years of debating what the ideal trade system should look like in a loot-based action RPG, tons of collaboration with our amazing community, and many sleepless nights in game design meetings with our game design team. We found through extensive polling that players of action RPGs are split nearly down the middle when it comes to those who want their experience to heavily involve trade and an economy, and those who want to focus on finding items themselves or with close friends. We believe that through the item faction system, we will deliver a tailored and exciting path to hunt for top tier items for both camps of players. In Last Epoch 1.0, you will join a faction once you reach the great mercantile city of Majelka. When you select to join the Merchant's Guild or the Circle of Fortune, a new interface will become available that will let you access details about your current status with your faction, known as reputation, how much favor you currently have, and what benefits your faction is currently providing you. Let's talk about these briefly. Reputation within a faction is a core part of how the faction is going to be benefiting you on your journey. As a representative of that faction, you will continue to increase your reputation by killing enemies and completing quests. For the Merchant Guild, this includes participating in a bazaar and completing trades at your current level. And for the Circle of Fortune, this means completing prophecies that will divine certain items after fulfilling the foretold conditions. Through earning reputation, you will ascend ranks within your faction, earning you unique benefits and options. Once you have earned reputation within a faction, that reputation stays with your account in that game mode. This means if you rank up a cycle character, all of your other cycle characters will have that rank when they join the same faction and oh. contribute to that faction's reputation gain. You may switch factions and earn and maintain reputation with them with no penalty to your earned reputation with the other. There are currently 10 ranks to achieve in each faction, with the later ranks requiring quite a bit of commitment in order to obtain. So while you have the freedom to change your faction at any time, you will want to pick a faction and stick with it to reach the most powerful benefits that they have to offer. It is important to note that you can only be a member of one faction at any given time per character, and items earned with the benefits from those factions will require that you are aligned with them in order to use them, so most players will want to stick to a faction that rewards their preferred playstyle. Next, let's talk about Favor. Favor is the currency you will earn while slaying enemies or completing quests for each of the factions. Favor is separate from reputation. This currency can be used to either complete trades with the Merchant's Guild or acquire new prophecies from the Circle of Fortune. And if you find yourself with excess favor, you can always spin the wheel with the Faction Gambler. Oh. Item gifting to party members has been in the game for a while now, and it isn't going anywhere. However, it's important to note that once you have joined a faction, items will start being tagged with the faction you were part of when they dropped. This means that while questing, if you are a member of the Merchant's Guild, and an item drops for you, that item will still be shareable with anyone who is in the party, like always, and be available to be sold, provided that you meet the rank requirements in the Merchant's Guild Bazaar. Just be sure that the person you are trading it to also meets the same faction requirements. 
The last use case we wanted to solve for are friends who choose to play together and just want their own little trade group, which brings us to resonances, which are a new type of item that can be found when you are questing with your friends or party members. This item can be used to enable an item to be gifted specifically to the player that you have a resonance with, even if they weren't there when the item dropped. We know a lot of times players will play with their friends and then later you'll be soloing a piece of content and the perfect item drops for your buddy. Well, thanks to the new resonance system, you will be able to give them that perfect item the next time you see them. As those of you who love loot-based action RPGs know, trade and economy is a very complex and divisive issue to solve for when catering to a large player base and different playstyles, while keeping the item acquisition hunt feeling great. Holy we can't wait to get your feedback on the system that we've come up with alongside you, and we thank you for all of your continued input and passion for helping me Holy heck! the next great action RPG. Oh. There is so much more to explore with the item faction system, so check out the deeper dive we have on our forums, and we look forward to seeing you in last epoch, February 21st. This game is getting so much better! Holy! Oh. Okay. Seriously? Amazing systems all around. Like this, this seems uh, even better than what I expected. Let's um, let's start uh, with it. I'm gonna skip the brief history because right now we are not interested in that. We're gonna start um, checking out the details uh, from that video. But yeah, so far looks amazing. Okay, item uh, functions. One of the most uh, common suggestions we received. And what other games have tried was uh, to have different cycles for trade or trade free. This solution would not uh, work for us as it would mean uh, dividing the player base away from each other, increasing overhead for uh, itemization and balancing what would be uh, effectively two games. So the question became how can we implement uh, two different ways? Okay, uh, this is still okay. This is still history. Join a faction. That's what we want. All right, your first opportunity to join either a merchant guild or a circle of fortune comes with uh, your arrival to the upper district of uh, the great mercantile city Majelka. Here, Zeric will introduce you to both factions and provide you the opportunity to take a look at what uh, each has to offer. I'm also selecting either merchant guilds or circle of fortune. You will be guided to the faction's central hub bazaar, the, uh, the central hub, excuse me, the bazaar or the observatory, respectively. We will uh, dive into what uh, each of these hub uh, offer. Now, item faction panel. We saw that on the video, so we got uh, ten levels here. I want to see what kind of uh, quests and uh, how you do you get those because that's something that I did not expect. Like, he said that by slaying monsters and um, fi uh, finishing, up, finishing up quests, right? <clears throat> uh, yeah, okay, so this is what we want. Rank and reputation. Your rank with the faction determines what benefits that uh, faction is willing to offer you. To gain access to more powerful benefits, you will need to gain reputation to increase your rank with them through two different ways. The first is by gaining experience, such as by defeating enemies and completing quests where, while aligned with them. So, just a quest from the campaign, basically. Okay? Just by... Uh, okay? Just by going about your adventure, you will passively build a reputation with your current faction. However, for a larger boost of your reputation, you need to participate in the faction core mechanic. This means completing dates when aligned with the Merchant Guild, or fulfilling prophecies with uh, the circle of fortune. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, especially when it comes to leveling uh, things on uh, your, uh, uh, you know, merchant guild. Circle of fortune is definitely more interesting because in the merchant guild you just gonna get a uh, reputation experience, you know, just uh, by trading, which is yeah, it's nice. But the prophecies, it's like an, another set of mini quests, you know, more things to do in the game, right? So, yeah, SSF is getting even better in Last Epoch. 
I don't know. It's it's fantastic so far. Your reputation with the faction is never lost or spent, and it's uh, also shared across your account in that game mode. This means if you rank up one character to Circle of Fortune rank seven on Hardcore uh, Cycle, any of your Hardcore Cycle characters upon joining Circle of Fortune will both share and contribute the same rank progression. Characters in a different game mode, such Solo or Standard, do have their uh, reputation separated in the same way. Uh, the player item stasis. Okay, one of the things that uh, it's not clarified here is okay. Let's say that you have one character to uh, rank seven circle of fortune, and you make another character. Can you join Merchant Guild? And if you do, are you gonna have the same uh, experience, or you need to level up again? Because when you swap. You have the same experience, right? You have the same things, but I'm not sure about this. I'm not. I'm also not sure if you have uh, different characters on the same cycle uh, league, on uh, different um, different uh, merchant guilds. I'm not sure about that. There are a total of ten ranks to achieve with other faction. Obtain uh, rank ten with a faction will take some time. So while you have the freedom to change your faction at any time. You will want uh, to find your preferred faction and stick with it to reach the most uh, potent benefits. Favors your primary accuracy with the factions. This one I did not expect, by the way. This is uh, something that uh, comes to a little bit uh, a surprise right now, but it seems cool. And the fact that we have uh, a separate uh, gambler for uh, this favor as well, this is uh, really nice. Separate for reputation. Favor is the, the currency you will uh, use to interact uh, with the faction mechanics and grant a reputation when spent. With the Merchant Guilds, you will need Favor to list an item to sell. Oh! Or to purchase an item. With the Circle of Fortune, you will need Favor to acquire prophecies. Favor can only be earned by slaying enemies and completing quests. The amount of Favor you gain with kills depends on the experience the enemy gives. So as you push further in the game, you find uh, yourself earning more favor to purchase greater rewards with your faction oh man this is amazing you find your, yourself in a position where you have excess favor you can spend it with a faction vendor all right so we actually need that uh, to trade oh that's so good that's so good okay it may seem a small thing here but this is the ultimate anti-bot uh, policy easy you don't have any favor you cannot trade bots need to go and kill stuff and then go trade it, it's an it's insane it's amazing we're gonna have a bot free trading system that is not easy to achieve on any game on any game regardless as a member of an item faction you will find uh, many items which will have an attached faction rank requirement this can be found at the bottom of uh, the item tooltip for merchant guilds item will gain a faction rank requirement when purchased through the bazaar or uh, via player to player trade they will gain that as well. Okay. The rank requirement on the tooltip of a merchant guild item will typically match the rank required to trade that particular item. So if you purchase a rank 4 idol through the bazaar, you will need to be at least rank 4 with the merchant guild in order to equip that idol. Mm -hmm. The exception of this rule would be with legendary items. If you purchase a unique weapon with LP at rank 6, and create a legendary with it, it will retain its rank 6 requirement rather than increase to rank 8. Oh, the rank that uh, requires to sell and purchase le legendary weapons rank 8, but it's not gonna increase up there. Okay. Where if you were directly purchase a legendary weapon, it will have a rank 8 requirement on the uh, item. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure if that why is that important? Ah, it is actually. 
Yeah, because you can um, you can buy um, an LP unique by your own as a rank six person, create your own uh, thing, and since the rank is not increasing, you you're gonna be able to use it. If the rank uh, increased into rank eight, you would need rank eight to to use it yourself. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's smart then. Makes it uh, easy, uh, not uh, easy, but it gives you an extra incentive. You can buy good LP items from uh, low, lower merchant guild ranks and still use them without uh, needing uh, to level up your uh, own uh, uh, rank very high. So yeah, that's pretty good. For Circle of Fortune, items obtained uh, from benefits of the faction will have a faction requirement. Most items that drop for you will be influenced by your faction benefits and thus you will find a faction requirement on most drop items you find. As your various faction benefits can influence the, uh, can influence the item in many ways, the rank requirement to equip the item will be based on your current Circle of Fortune rank at the time that it drops, while never exceeding it. The maximum Circle of Fortune requirement is rank 5. Oh, so that's... Uh, that's pretty low. So you don't uh, need to level up uh, higher than 5 for equipping stuff at least. <clears throat> Items with faction rank requirement require that you actively be in the faction to meet the requirements. For instance, you initially join Circle of Fortune and reach rank 4 and have an item that uh, requires um, Circle of Fortune rank 2. You then change to Merchant Guild even though if you swap back to Circle of Fortune you will still be rank 4, you will not be able to equip that item unless you do swap back to Circle of Fortune. Okay. Makes sense? Makes sense. Both Merchant Guilds and Circle of Fortune uh, members will be able to trade favor in exchange for rewards. Uh, for those familiar with the Gambler Artem, you will find faction vendors share uh, some similarities and some differences. Faction vendors sell items with uh, base items, item types exclusive to your faction and can generate exalted items. Wait. Base item types exclusive to your faction? Oh. And can generate exalted as well. Item faction uh, item types can be powerful early on as you gain access to them but will be outpaced by end game types to be read from, from faction selection. Oh, so we're basically we're getting something like the personal items. Okay. <clears throat> Circle of Fortune members can also purchase lenses from their faction vendor, which will get into the Circle of Fortune section. Man. Faction gambling can be accessed by speaking to our faction uh, leader found near the waypoint in your faction hub and selecting both faction waves. Okay. Gifting faction items. Let's see. Items that have a faction rank requirement follow the same rules for gifting as all items. To gift another uh, an item to another player, you will need to be playing a party with that player and uh, the other player will need to be present when the item drops. Basically, both players need to be on the same zone when an item drops to be gifted, just like it works right now. Alternatively, you can use relevant uh, resonance to make the item eligible to be gifted. Gifting items does not incur any favor or gold cost and simply gives an item to another player. There is no exchange. It's important to keep in mind that while any equipable item can be gifted, the recipient of the item will still need to meet the item requirements, including the faction requirements, to be able to equip the item. I want uh, a little bit more uh, information for the resonance, maybe we'll get them uh, later. In the words of now the Merchant Guild is a ship guiding you through the seas of trade in the bazaar. The Merchant Guild offers uh, the power of trade. Players around the world visit the bazaar to offer their items to trade, so finding the right item for you becomes a civil speaking to the right person and having the right currency. Your rank with the Merchant uh, Guild will determine what kind of trades you will be entrusted with, meaning with more reputation comes the opportunity to both obtain and sell more powerful and sought-after items. By selecting 
To learn more about the Mexican Guild, you will be directed uh, to the bazaar located just north of the Maserga city center. Bustling with trade cards, merchants, and stalls <laughs> of all kinds, <laughs> even the rarest uh, items in the terra can be found within the stalls of bazaar for a price. Uh, okay. Uh, you will find numerous stalls. It's dedicated to a specific equipment type. Okay, so that's important. The complete list of items will be able to be traded through bazaar. Helmets, amulets, all weapon and offhand item types, rings, belts, gloves, body armor, boots, relics, and idols. If it can go it, it can be bought and sold. Assuming you are trusted enough with the guild uh, to contact the trade. There are some limitations, however, on buying and selling items in the bazaar. That's what I want to see. Firstly, the Merchant Guild only trades in worldly wares. This means if an item has been dropped through the providence of Circle of Fortune, it cannot be traded. Fantastic. The Guild views these items as bound uh, to their owners and will not facilitate the trade. Secondly, the Merchant Guild maintains control over their economy by marking any item which pass uh, through the hands of merchants. Trade the sacred and permanent exchange in the eyes of the guild. After you purchase an item from the merchant guild, it cannot be traded again. Thirdly, you must have built up enough reputation with the merchant guild to deal in a particular item, type or rarity. Not every street uh, urchin can be trusted with the exchange of high level goods. I love the, the, the language on this part. It's amazing. <laughs> Finally, you will need sufficient favor to participate in the trade to prove to the Merchant Guild that you are an active merchant in the world and are not just seeking to benefit from their hard work. Rank Rewards <coughs> Rank 1. Trade basic items. You buy and sell normal magic and rare items in the bazaar or directly with other uh, players. Uh, rank 2. Trade set items. Rank 3 trade specific unique items. You can buy and sell unique items with no legendary potential in the bazaar or directly with other players. Rank 4 trade idols. Rank 5 trade exalted weapons. Rank 6 trade unique weapons. Oh, so uniques and unique weapons are different category. Okay. Uh, rank 7, trade all exalted items, okay. Rank 8, trade all unique items, uh, including those that have uh, legendary potential now. Rank 9, trade legendary weapons. And rank 10, trade all legendary items. So you actually need to max out for legendary items. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it kind of feels like uh, you need uh, to rush into rank 8 because then you can buy and sell uh, uniques with uh, legendary potential, right? So, yeah. Because in rank 6, you can only buy and sell le uh, legendary potential weapons. So, all of the other unique items uh, for, other, for the other slots are not going to be available to you. So, yeah, rank 8 is definitely the thing. You can start buying legendary potential weapons at rank 6 though and uh, start uh, slamming to get your items. Okay, buying items. To buy an items through the Merchant Guild, you will need to start by visiting the bazaars as north. Okay, how many times we're gonna get that? Um, okay, speaking the stall vendor, we'll open the bazaar search window. This will list all items currently for sale from players all across the world who are participating in the game mode. We want to ensure that there was no obfuscation. Okay, <laughs> okay. Uh, Kane, you're making it very hard uh, for me to read. And unnecessary limitations with, uh, within searching the bazaar, so you will find a robust suit of search tools to help you refine your search for precisely the item uh, or uh, the type of items you want to find. Uh, we also want to make sure there is no guesswork with uh, what you're buying, so you're trying to make the UI for each time and clearly display all the important item information, including all implicit affixes, force potential, legendary potential, uh, equip requirements, and stuff like that. 
Ok. Hum, oh. Uh, this is actually important. With the bazaar, we wanted to make sure players uh, have the, all the power they need to find what they're looking for. So you'll find options here you won't find in the loot filter. Oh! Such as define your set by amount of forging potential, weaver's will value, and I'm guessing we also gonna have the amount the uh, we also gonna have the opportunity to get uh, to filter for legendary potential. I'm guessing. We've also updated our affix uh, list to only show affix applicable to the item, and we will be rolling out this change to loot filters as well. Making find the right affix even easier. Oh, finally. So I've talked about, I don't know, I probably, yeah, we're in, the, never mind. So I've talked about this a little bit in the past, uh, that, uh, you know, when you get uh, an item type on your loot filter, you still have the full affix list, right? So that makes it extremely hard to know exactly. And especially for idols, like for idols, there are um, affixes that um, overlap but with different values uh, between uh, different types of idols so it's really tough to to make a, a good filter for them but this is gonna make it much easier okay let's uh, check out a little bit here the interface do we have no it's just uh, okay uh, okay Leverage, min max, gold cost, rarity, class, okay. Wait a minute. Wow, so you actually gonna need a lot of favor. 25,000 favor to trade one LP leg uh, legendary weapon? Ah, uh, you missed a little bit, but we're gonna be talking a uh, for a lot. Don't worry, Ultra. Wow! That's a lot of favor. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I love it. I absolutely love it. <clears throat> Again, one of the main reasons that I, I like stuff like that, even though, you know, it may seem, uh, why, why is this dude so excited? It's because we, it's a very, very good protection against bots. So... It's uh, extremely good to know that uh, even if the game explodes and we have, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of people playing trade, we're not going to be flooded with uh, bots that uh, screw up any uh, economy system that uh, comes um, into place, right? So this is fantastic. Like the, the 25,000 uh, favor, for example, for one trade, uh, for, for someone that plays the game, it's going to be no problem, right? You're gonna be getting uh, a lot of favor just by killing monsters, but for a bot, that's way too much, right? So this is this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. I I, I cannot uh, stress that enough. Once you find the item you want, you'll first need to make sure you have what you need to purchase the item, including faction rank, favor cost, and the amount of gold the seller is asking for. So long uh, as you meet. Uh, these requirements simply hover the item, select buy, and you will get final confirmation to purchase the item. Once you confirm the purchase, the item will instantly appear in your inventory or gift inventory if full. All right. <laughs> Selling items. To sell items through the Merchant's Guild, you will want uh, to start by visiting your personal stall. This can be assessed uh, through any vendor in the bazaar north of Manzelka in the Divine Era and selecting my stall on the right side of the window by speaking to Kubra and selecting Open My Store. With your store open, you will be able to view all your currently listed items as well as previous sales you made. To list a new item, uh, you can select uh, List an Item, uh, which will open a small window to insert an item to sell as well as your inventory to pull items from. 
To list an item, you will first need to meet uh, the rank requirement for that item. Upon placing an item into the window, the Merchants Guild will automatically assign a favor cost to uh, list the item based on the item quality, list the required rank and provide you an input box to enter the asking price of the item. The Merchant Guild doesn't take a cut for any profit, so the asking price is what the player will need to pay to buy the item and you will get a full asking price upon sale. No cut? Man, these guys work for free! <coughs> okay. So favor uh, is uh, automatically and you need uh, to pay some favor to uh, make listings. I'm guessing this is going to be a little bit uh, less than uh, w the amount of favor you pay to buy it. But I don't know. But that's my guess because, you know, someone that uh, wants to sell items, you, you, you're going to be listing a lot of items and then some of them you, you're going to be taking them down, right? So that's favor wasted. I'm not sure uh, if it's going to be as high as someone that uh, buys the item, but yeah, either way, seems pretty good already. Uh, when viewing your stall, you can also unlist an item by hovering uh, over it and selecting unlist. It's also worth clarifying while our previous overview of the Merchant Guild mentioned a limit to how many items you can list at, at a time based on your rank. The restriction has now been removed. Once an item has successfully sold, you can finish your stall in the bazaar at any time to redeem the gold from the sale. Fantastic. Okay. Yeah, no item limitation for uh, listing. I think that's uh, completely fine. It's not gonna be a problem. <coughs> Circle of Fortune. The Star's Guide, Our Fate, is the fundamental creed of the Circle of Fortune. While some see the power of coin, others dedicate themselves to intimately knowing the shape and nature of the heavens and through it to know the same of their future. Rather than relying on commerce to f f fuel their item acquisition, members of the first circle of fortune will gain powerful benefits to their potential to find items. With access to prophecies, they will gain the ability to peer into their future and find precisely where certain treasures await. By choosing to align with the Circle of Fortune, you will be directed to visit the Observatory, located in the North Manzerka in the Divine Era. The Observatory serves as the Circle of Fortune primary hub. Here we, you will find the faction leaders and various uh, telescopes for observing the heavens which allow you to trade favor for prophecies. Uh, while much power can be found in acquiring prophecies, the Circle of Fortune also grants exceptionally powerful passive bonuses to your item finding abilities as you rank up with reputation. <clears throat> okay, the, let's uh, check the rank rewards, uh, rewards then, first. Enemy item drop chance. Enemies at uh, rank 1. Enemies have a 35% chance of dropping twice as many items. Wait, what? Is this very high? What? 35% chance? Is it gonna be applied into bosses as well? Isn't this ex extremely high? Okay, rank 2, upgrade Rune of Ascendance! 45% chance for Rune of Ascendance to be preserved when used on an item that requires at least a second. What? What on earth? Okay. 45% chance to preserve it? Oh my god. Idol drop chance. Whenever an idol drops, there is a 25% chance for two more to drop at the same time. What? Okay, this oh this is uh, this is uh, not good for my health. Rack four. Exalted affixes. Affixes are 50% more likely to be exalted. Okay, 
I'm guessing this is not very crazy, even uh, though the percent is high, because it's already low, right? But yeah, it's still gonna be very, very helpful. Monolith Echo Reward Upgrade. 35% chance for double rewards from no Monolith Echoes. Legendary Potential Chance. Uniques are twice as likely to have legendary potential. Tier 7 Affix Chance. Tier 7 Affixes are twice as common. Rare to Exalted Chance. Items that would drop as rare above level 44 have a 25% chance of becoming exalted. Rank 9, full set drop chance. When a set item would drop, the whole set drops instead. Okay, this for rank 9, I don't think it's very powerful unless they give us more and uh, better set uh, sets. They've already said that, uh, you know, they're looking into sets and uh, we're gonna get uh, a set uh, item rework Probably in the next couple of cycles, not in 1.0. Prophecy reward upgrade items for prophecies are duplicated. Dude, what's going on? This feels like extremely broken. Unless we're getting some kind of big nerf on uh, all of the drops, which has not been uh, said uh, so far, but prophecies. Prophecies are pseudo items which can be purchased in the observatory that uh, can cause that cause certain item drops or increase the odds of higher tier affixes being generated. On an item when you complete the requirements listed on the prophecy. <clears throat> Excuse me. To acquire prophecy, start by visiting the observatory located. Okay, we know. Uh, oh, uh, each telescope offers prophecies for specific item types: armor, weapons, idols, and craft materials and uh, accessories. Okay. Uh, upon appearing through a telescope, you will observe a constellation with, with randomly generated prophecies represented by its stars. By hovering over one of the stars, you can see details regarding the specific prophecy, including the favorite cost. The event which will trigger the prophecy, any special conditions for the prophecy, and uh, what the prophecy will re reward upon completion. The more powerful a prophecy, the more favorite it will cost to obtain. You can view all your current prophecies in your faction window accessed through the Y key by default. You can have a maximum of 48 active prophecies at any given time. Prophecies can also be discarded through the faction panel. Alright. <clears throat> Prophecy events. The prophecy event will outline what particular event needs to occur in order for the prophecy to trigger. Some examples of events are death of Chrono Master Zula, death of an arena champion, death of uh, X number of rare enemies, death of a number of siege golems. Okay, a lot of death. Prophecy conditions. The prophecy condition will outline any additional conditions that need uh, to be met for the prophecy to trigger. Not all prophecies have extra conditions through, though as you progress to high ranks you will find them to be more common. Some example conditions are monoliths, light glass arbor, follow the outcast uh, timeline or 320 corruption. Okay. Prophecy reward. Fairly straightforward. This is uh, the, what kind of reward will drop for you upon completing the prophecy. Some example rewards are X number of rare body, body unique armors, uh, body armors. X number of exalted amulets, unique uh, weapon or unique amulet, minimum LP. So you can get prophecies with guarantee LP uniques. Holy Jesus Christ. 
Is a uh, circle of fortune our bodies? <laughs> okay, lenses. Lenses offer a method to modify your telescope in the observatory to further refine what kind of prophecies you can discover. Like item factions uh, themselves, lenses have been added to the observatory in response to community feedback from our community tester program. Holy Jesus. Lenses are items which can be purchased from your faction vendor and then slotted into a telescope. Lenses are permanent items, so once you purchase a lens, you can uh, slot it into a telescope, remove it and store it like any other item. They're not consumable. Each telescope is equipped uh, with three lenses. You can see the slots uh, down here, right? Uh, for the telescopes. <clears throat> three lens slots unlocked at uh, Circle of Fortune ranks 2, 5 and 9. Okay. When you view the faction shop, you will find two tabs listing lenses, regional lenses and granular lenses. Regional lenses are lenses with, uh, which are specific to one telescope. For instance, an EOS uh, telescope lens can only be fitted into an EOS telescope. And it has a middle fire specific to weapon prophecies, which is the EOS uh, telescope uh, provides. Granular lenses can be slotted into any telescope. You can add multiple of the same lenses to a telescope for an additive effect. To help uh, get a better idea of these lenses, let's take a quick look. 100% uh, chance reduce chance. Uh, okay. Let's uh, do it again. 100% chance reduced. Reduce chance for pros to have a campaign event. Okay. So you take out the campaign events. Okay. 80% increased cost of all prophecies, but they offer twice as many uses before expiring huh focusing less of idols 15 percent increase uh, chance per rank to fight large idols uh it has less uh, of the unmatched 15 percent increased chance per rank to find unique items option less of battle 100 percent uh, reduced chance for prophecies to have arena events you may notice there there are four times of modifiers here, lenses which increase the chance of uh, certain item types, lenses which increase the chance for certain item rarities, lenses which uh, block certain prophecy activities, and finally lenses which modify favored cost for specific prophecy effects. This offers a lot of power to customize the randomness of prophecies and focus them on the types of items you want, as well as the activities you want to do. There is also room for more types of lenses to add in the future, though these uh, will be the four types that uh, we'll get in 1.0. Uh, faction rank rewards for lenses. Rank 2 unlock the increased chance for specific item prophecy. Rank 3 block uh, activity type lens. Rank 4 increased chance for specific item rarity. Rank 5 block high corruption. Okay. Rank 7, unlock a uh, special great la uh, greater lens. Uh, prophecies cost 80% uh, more favor and have uh, twice as many uses. Rank 8, unlock special greater lens. Prophecies cost 90% more favor and have double reward types. Rank 9, unlock uh, the third uh, slot. Oh yeah, the, the first slot is rank 2, the second slot is rank 5, and rank 9 is the third. Okay. I am not gonna lie, Circle of Form, uh, Fortune Faction actually looks amazing. I'm not sure how powerful the, the prophecies are gonna be. They seem to be good, but even without the prophecies, it's still pretty damn good. From what it seems right now, right? Okay, let's go to resonances. This is another very, very interesting part uh, of uh, this update. While resonances are technically separate from the item faction system because we had mentioned them in the original developer uh, blog regarding item factions, we felt it only makes sense to talk about them here. So let's talk a bit about resonances with 1.0. I want to see a little bit here. So Obsidian Resonance, uh, it resonates with uh, a player used to gift an item and bypass normal uh, gifting restrictions can be used with Exalted or uh, Legendary items uh, must be stored before you store by pressing out oh, they are stored in the transfer material button okay and Golden Resonance 
used to gift an item and bypass normal gifting restrictions can be used with normal uh, rare unique or set items aha okay <clears throat> fyi the name uh, karvaruski here this is a, a poe content content creator and he has been with ehg for uh, for a long time now and yeah he's a he's a pretty good uh, dude I I liked uh, his content uh, for uh, POE. He had a little bit of a you know more unique way of uh, watching uh, builds and uh, characters, and I uh, really like that. All right, resonances are a new type uh, item type which drop uh, when you play it alongside the player for an extended period of time. Using a resonance on an item will enable it to be gifted to that player even if they were not present when the item dropped. When a resonance drops, it will drop with the player name in the item card to show who it enables gifting with. As you may notice for this example label, there are different types of resonance, obsidian um, resonances which are required for legendary or exalted items and golden resonances which are required for unique set, rare, magic or normal quality type items. Upon picking up a resonance, it is placed in your inventory and uh, will be stored in your gifting inventory when uh, you store crafting materials. Once stored, you can uh, when you open a gift uh, gifting window to a player, you will have uh, a flyout menu to select a resonance to use for the gift. Resonances are consumable, so pay heed to when you decide to use them. Okay, let's see that. Ah, okay. <clears throat> all right pretty simple and they're being stored inside here so you don't have to spend anything uh, for that one of the big uh, questions we often see about resonance how long is an extended period of time the answer depends the amount of time required to have a resonance drop is slightly random through though golden uh, resonances will be more common than obsidian resonances we also want to make sure that uh, uh, Resonances are aren't used for pseudo trading as a way to bypass the Mercer Guild requirement. Ah, I, I love you, AZ, so much. At the current time, we don't want to share exactly what the time range. However, we'll of course be watching feedback and adjusting it based on how people feel about them, as well as how they're being used. Aha. Uh -huh. So it's time based. It's not a random drop. Kinda like it honestly, but yeah. <clears throat> Closing. Uh yeah. Thank you very much. You're liking everything so far. I like them as well. I actually like them uh, a lot. And all of the systems seem uh, to be even better than I expected to, uh, them to be. And yeah. It's also uh, a system that, let's say, it's not boring, right? Because even, even in a trade environment, right? In order to do trades, you are actually going to be required to play the game and gain favor, right? So, I don't know if anyone's uh, familiar, we have uh, this term in uh, Path of Exile um, that, uh, you know, they're uh, hideout uh, warriors. Those are people that uh, they just stay in hideout all day and they just uh, trade. They're buying stuff and uh, they are the crafting, creating, whatever they do, and then they sell them, right? So, this thing here will not be able to happen. That honestly makes for a much uh, healthier economy because uh, you don't have to account for, uh, you know, profit for people that do that all the time and uh, they don't do anything else. So it's it's an amazing system so far. Of course, we're going to have to play with, uh, with it, but Merchant's Guild seems very, very good. Everything that uh, we had uh, a little bit of information before, but everything that uh, they have been uh, saying so far, it's uh, it seems that uh, has been applied, and maybe if in uh, in in 
excuse me, in an even better form, right? Uh, because uh, from the values that I see here on uh, favors and uh, stuff like that, it's not gonna be easy to just um, keep trading stuff. You're gonna need uh, to play the game in your favor, but it's not gonna be terribly, um, you know, limited as well. So very, very good things all around. Uh, I like the fact that uh, you still need favor just uh, to to list uh, the item. That's also a, a nice system. And Circle of Fortune, I mean, I'm not in the community test server, but Circle of Fortune seems very, very powerful. I've talked about uh, this uh, a little bit before. I I love the SSF aspect in Last Epoch uh, because the things that you're picking up from the ground have a really high value for the most part. Um, the SSF aspect is really good and because we have a lot of target farming, right? Either boss uh, or uh, through dungeons with uh, the specific um, modifiers or because uh, we can uh, go into certain timelines and uh, farm certain um, uh, uniques or even exalted items, right? Because, you know, Exalted body armors, exalted helmets, those are unique uh, echo, echo, um, those are echo rewards, right? The numbers here, the percentages that I see, seem a little bit high to me, but I haven't played with it, so we'll see. I'm not even sure what exactly their purpose is, but also I need uh, to be very um, specific here because we are talking about cycles and that means limited amount of time so basically about three months um when you're playing ssf in a cycle i've talked about this a lot in the past in last epoch it would be almost impossible to get high min maxed characters right because the amount of time that you need to spend sometimes to find some uniques with lp and uh, maybe even some uh, good rolls on those uniques and also find, uh, you know, good uh, exalted items, find tier 7 uh, exalted items, or, um, or you know, um, just uh, craft really, really high uh, and strong exalted items for uh, 3 LP uniques and stuff like that. It takes a long time. I can tell you from personal experience that uh, I have uh, in the game, in the last 8 months, in 1500 hours, I had some uh, three LP uniques that I was farming forever until I finally managed to craft an exalted item that I was happy and uh, so that I don't feel I'm, I'm wasting my three LP item, right? So this is extremely important to me. And even though the numbers, they seem high, I think they're gonna be fine because we are talking about cycles, right? In a cycle, you need to be able on an SSF environment to feel good about the character you're creating, about the build you're creating, and also have the potential of uh, creating really strong characters with uh, rare uniques, you know? You might want uh, to, to get, uh, let's say, uh, a character with uh, two red rings, right? It would be impossible with, uh, without that. It would be impossible. Just as a reference, in, October, in eight months, I've only dropped one red ring. I got another one finally after, uh, you know, 300 rune facets, but I've only dropped one. And that's, um, let's say, a lot of farming I've done in like 300, 400, 500, 600 corruption. It, it's, uh, it's a lot, right? It's a grind game. Most ARPGs are, but uh, last ebook, even though it has a little bit uh, of a lower entry fee, let's say, it's very very grindy to the high end and uh, for the top end right so yeah this is a uh, this is really good i like everything that i see on the circle of fortune honestly i've been saying for a long time that i wanted to try the the trading system for the first cycle but circle of fortune right now seems so nice i might just go circle of fortune we'll see it's still early to decide but yeah <laughs> Everything uh, that uh, they have shared with us uh, today so far, they, they seem amazing. I really like their prophecies as well, because as an SSF player, that's, um, you know, another extra thing that um, you can do um, 
uh, for uh, for your characters, and that's uh, gonna be really good. I wanna see how good the rewards are gonna be from them, but yeah. <clears throat> everything everything seems uh, really good, really well uh, thought, really well thought. That's uh, the the best part. Uh, from almost everything so far that uh, ESG has introduced uh, into the game that they're very well thought and um, they're also accounting for the feedback of the community and this is something that uh, I'm really hoping that uh, they keep uh, at uh, this level. <clears throat> 